Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's main event. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. You know, during the recent holiday shopping season, I had a lot of time to to think. Just some quiet time to think. Spent a lot of time in the shopping malls. Noticed the small crowds and all of the people who were at the shopping malls who had no shopping bags. They were just looking. A lot of that going on. But one thing that I noticed, and it kind of uh, started me on this train of thought, was the number and kind of stores that have gone out of business. But not only that, the kinds of items those stores sold. Because when you think about it, we have begun a new era. The old era was marked by bull markets, dot coms, Starbucks, specialty stores at the mall. You know, it wasn't enough to have Macy's or J.C. Penney. It was necessary to have, like, a separate store for kitchen utensils. Remember Lecter's? Of course, then Bed Bath & Beyond had kitchen utensils and bathroom stuff. So there was a time you could go to Macy's or the old Robinson's May. Remember that? Or any of those middle-level department stores. And you could pick up a little bit of everything. A frying pan, a pair of pants, a color TV. And the malls turned into these... Uh, Locations where every store sold some specialty item. Toomey, the company that makes those uh, suitcases, carrying cases for your computer and what have you. They had a store that sold just that. So I started looking and it started in the mall. And I started looking around at how dated all that stuff looks now. I mean, what is more blasé, what is more of the past than Starbucks? You know, back in my day, we went to this, we went to this coffee shop, we paid five bucks for a cup of coffee. You know what else we did? <laughs> we tipped the guy, too. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Way back in the old days. I remember we bought cars. They got 10 miles to the gallon. You'd have to fill them up once a day. <laughs> Those were the days. I'm looking around the mall and I'm starting to notice that in all the empty stores in the mall, I didn't just see an economic turndown. I saw a cultural change happening before my eyes. It's happening before everybody's eyes. I'm watching TV and I'm hearing people talking about when Citibank is going to go out of business. Citibank. That's a big bank. That's not Downey Savings. That, this is Citibank. Global Citibank. Big Citibank. Every country, Citibank, everywhere. ATMs everywhere. Advertising everywhere. There's a new ballpark opening up in New York City for the New York Mets in April called City Field with the logo of Citibank on it. There may not be a Citibank by April. And it may be a moot point anyway, since Fred Wilpon, the owner of the New York Mets, was one of Bernie Madoff's clients. 
Who even knows if they'll be New York Mets by April? <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. Times have changed. And they're changing before our eyes. We're so busy worrying about whether we're losing our jobs. We're so busy worrying about how we're going to pay the mortgage that we aren't taking the time out to see what's happening around us culturally. For days in the newspaper, I've been seeing stories about the small cars that the big uh, three car manufacturers are working on coming out with. During the 90s and the early 2000s, they didn't have any small cars. Now they're tripping all over each other to get electric cars to the market. <laughs> what is happening? Seriously. Things are changing. Saw a story the other day. Not kidding. Plastic surgeons say that boob jobs, the number of boob jobs is down. In my day, every woman had fake boobs. <laughs> they used to go to a doctor. They used to stick them in there. Uh, you think about the past, baby. Chicks with fake boobs go to Starbucks reading Us Weekly, reading about some other dinosaurs. Uh, uh, tell me these don't seem like dinosaurs to you. Britney Spears, <laughs> Paris Hilton, Lindsay Lohan. Don't they seem like relics of another age? Is anyone paying any attention to them anymore? I mean, they have suddenly, as far as I can tell, fallen off the radar screen. A year ago, they were a big deal. And now nobody seems to care anymore. I might add another thing. Speaking of being at the shopping mall, here's another thing of the past. Shopping malls. I mean, what is the point? Everybody I know is shopping at Costco and Trader Joe's. Who needs to go? When's the last time you went to a shopping mall? And for what? I'm walking around the shopping mall. I feel like I'm in a museum. A museum of the excess of the 80s and the 90s. Stores where they sold, and by the way, these were vacant stores, where they sold nothing but $150 uh, basketball shoes. Remember Foot Locker? <laughs> Remember Champs? Now, I know these companies are still in business, but I saw one Champs that had closed. And it had closed recently. And you could see where the the logos of Nike and Adidas had been pulled out, Reebok. There was nothing but the outline of the old sign on the wall. The remnants of the shelves where the $150 and $200 a pair of shoes used to sit. Anybody buying those anymore? Seriously. <laughs> I want to talk to you about things that seemed like the coolest things ever. That have fallen off the radar. They now look like ancient relics. Honestly. Stuff you look at and you say, I can't believe we ever liked that. I can't believe we ever did that. Jesus. There are people who are no longer relevant. Trends that have disappeared entirely. I remember when I used to worry about getting an article written about myself in the newspaper. I, I actually hired publicists so they could get my name in the newspaper. Who reads the newspaper? In Seattle, they're about to lose their second newspaper, which is about to become an online newspaper. It's just going to stop printing <laughs> a physical edition entirely. In Detroit, the Detroit Free Press, it's only going to have a physical edition four days a week. You know where that's going. That's just step one. Mesa, Arizona, the East Valley Tribune newspaper owned by uh, the company that owns the Orange County Register. It's only going to be coming out three days a week. The rest of the time, they recommend you go to their website. Newspapers. Gone with the dinosaur. 
10 miles a gallon trucks and other big vehicles gone. They can't give them away. They can't give them away. By the way, the sales of those fell in May of 2008. 2008. May 2008. Uh, when gas went over four dollars a gallon, that was the end of the SUV. Done. Done. It just disappeared. They can't give them away. So I want you to look around. Look around you. There are still remnants of the good old days. The days when we were making money hand over fist. The days when we, we spent ridiculous cashola on just about everything. Circuit City, you know, there used to be this store you would go in and they had all this electronics. <laughs> I bought an answering machine there once. <laughs> I mean, doesn't it seem like time is just speeding up? And, and things are happening faster and faster? It seems like more and more things have gone out of fashion or just people just, the things they loved a year ago they now hate or they now reject or the things people were buying like crazy they now don't buy anymore. Who's had a Kobe hamburger lately? Made with Kobe beef. How, who's had one? <laughs> Not many of you. I want you to look around you. I want you to tell me what remnants there are of the good old days. Things we used to care about, things we used to buy, trends we used to follow that suddenly in the past year have gone away. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. With shorter commercial breaks, more phone calls than ever before. We move the calls along faster. You get on the air faster. Don't believe me? Try me. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. What are some of the vestiges of the good times that no longer exist? Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mr. Likas, thank you for taking my call. Big yes, the show. thank you. I was at a trade show with, uh, we, I have a family business, and my, mo and my mom and my sister were doing the whole superficial thing that women do, and they started pointing out these disgusting boots called Uggs. Yes. And what I started noticing was, is they were making fun of all the girls who didn't have the Ugg thing, the, the little trademark Ugg on the back, they're all knockoffs. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and some of the girls were actually, took the liberty of taking the off the 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 sign so they wouldn't know that they were knockoffs <laughs> and i i just i couldn't believe it and then it started me thinking and i started looking like because those i guess those are really popular and i started looking everyone wore them but literally like nine out of ten i was looking at they were all knockoffs by the Instead way by the like, way the inside joke is on those chicks because uh this is not a joke uggs the name uggs it, it, the word is short for ugly <laughs> And the creator of the boots, who was in Australia or New Zealand, that's what he called them, Uggs. Well, they are ugly, and I never understood why on God's green earth would anyone in, the, in California need to actually have boots with a pair of shorts on. And now it's funny. Uh, you know why? Way. Because they don't want men to look at them. Uh, they don't want to have sex. They don't want to be attractive to anyone. And let alone now, they gotta they gotta be so superficial. They gotta take off the uh, the knockoff brand. These have to, these have to be women, by the way. The women who wear Uggs. These have to be women who are so tired of guys hitting on them. They found the ultimate way to repel men. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Thank you very much for the opportunity and taking me out. One of my mentors, Mr. Bill O'Reilly. Here you go, Eric. Thank you. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! F***ing thing sucks! It's 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking about things that were, uh, well, just big fads, big trends, the stuff we were buying, the stores we were going to, the items we thought were the hottest, 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 that suddenly fell off a cliff in the last year. Because of the economy. Robert, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sir. Sure. Hey, uh, one thing is, it's been years now, but uh, when our former morning guy there at the station there left the satellite, I was so much, I really liked the satellite, 
And then, you know, it's too much money. You know, 13 bucks a month just to listen to him. And, you know, it's been years now. I, I, the first year, I think I, I, I looked at his website every day to see what I had missed. Now, I didn't care. When I found out he got married, I didn't care. And, I, and as a matter of fact, I got upset when I found out. I go, what a wolf. He's going to marry that gal. I mean, God, at least how embarrassing. But uh, ever since that, I don't even care anymore about what he does anymore. So you saying that satellite radio is a relic of the past, or Howard Stern is? Uh, I think both of them, because if you look at the stock prices for what satellite radio is now, I mean, when they, when he first announced he was going to go over there, I think stocks were worth a lot. But now, I heard they were down to like a quarter or something like that. Oh no, 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 no! You're being way too generous. Uh, Sirius XM stock today is down to thirteen cents. Well, see, there it is. I mean, I mean, the stock, everything. I mean, I think a lot of people are like, oh, oh, it's going to happen, and. It just never happened, and uh, like I said, I don't even pay attention to what he's doing anymore. I know, I hear rumors, I think I checked it for the weekend with Elvin, I hear someone on the show was fat again, and I'm like, I go, uh, who cares, that would really ma really mattered before, but it really doesn't, so I get the falls under, who really doesn't, to me, is on the radar anymore of what he does. Okay, Robert, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jason. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jason. How's it going? Uh, I just wanted to say that the reason I think for all these companies failing is because of the Internet. Which ones? I mean, I mean okay, uh, I know that Barnes and, Nobles, Barnes and Nobles and Borders are shutting down a lot of their stores lately. And, uh, I mean, I, I know most people are smart enough to go to Amazon.com and get maybe 80, save 80% 80 on a book. Or, uh, I mean, the only reason I go to shoe stores now is to try it on and see if it fits, and then I order the same size online for maybe a third of the price. Yeah, well, I, you know what? I have to say uh, I've done the same thing. Um, I, uh, at one time in my life, like to go to bookstores and browse around. And now, uh, why do that? Uh, when you get on the Amazon website, you not only can look at titles of books and authors of books, and you not only have a bigger selection of books, uh, you can actually use uh, uh, the Amazon website, A9.com, and you can actually read portions of books to decide if you want to buy them. Exactly. Uh, so there is no reason to go to a physical bookstore. And I can get reader feedback. I can see what other people are reviewing and what they think of the book. I can't do that in the store. Yeah. Excellent. Good points. Thank you. Yeah. Remember, uh, we, you had the small neighborhood bookstore, and everybody was all upset because it was being replaced by Borders and Barnes and Noble. And remember, Bookstar. <laughs> Bookstar doesn't exist anymore, does it? They were bought, I think, by Barnes and Noble. And now you've got uh, Amazon.com replacing <laughs> replacing all these physical bookstores. By the way, uh, did anybody notice that uh, there's almost no record stores? I remember record stores, Tower Records, yeah. Uh, Virgin um, Virgin Mega Store on Sunset Boulevard gone. Everyone said that was the one that was going to survive after Tower went away. It had survived just a few months, and then they went away. Wow. Well, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. We're ripping through phone calls here, and uh, we're talking about uh, whether it's trends or consumer products or celebrities or fads that were hot, hot, hot until very recently when the economy turned down. Now they look like relics. Mike on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mike. All right, Matt. You know the thing that this economic downturn has gotten rid of that I'm so glad are those ugly shoes called Crocs. <laughs> that was the ugliest thing that anybody has ever come up with. Yeah. And people are always talking about, oh, they're so comfortable, but you seriously, you see like these 40-year-old women going out in the streets with Crocs. That, they're the ones who couldn't afford Uggs. Exactly. <laughs> Uglies and Crocs and... Uh. <laughs> All right, Tom, can you take me out, Bill O'Reilly style? Uh, yes, yes, I can, Mike. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. And thing sucks. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? I'm doing okay, Bill. Hey, I was gonna say, uh, movie theaters are becoming extinct, aren't they? As far as going to 
to the movies when you can just, you know, wait for it to come out on video. Well, beyond that, uh, you can wait for it to come on pay-per-view. I mean, movies yeah. uh, are not in the theater very long before they end up on pay-per-view. And i got to tell you, I went to a movie theater over the holidays to see a movie. It was the second movie I saw of 2008. The first one I saw, Tropic Thunder, when it was the middle of the summer. Uh-huh. All right, and then um, uh, six months later, I went to see a Slumdog Millionaire at a theater in Santa Barbara. And let me let me tell you about my experience of going to a movie theater. Okay, by the way, this is a great movie. It won four Golden Globes. And uh, look forward at the Oscars. Uh, everyone's going to be paying attention to this film, okay? Right. So um, there I am. I'm at a movie theater in downtown Santa Barbara. And uh, there's a line of people to get in. And when I get inside... Uh, you get in there, and there is a mile-long line at the concession stand. And then when I got inside the theater, some moron just decided that both armrests were completely his turf, on his <laughs> left and his right. He would not leave one millimeter for me to put my arm on the rest. And in fact, started getting annoyed when I put my soda in the little cup holder there. Yeah. Yeah. I had to listen to people talking continuously, sending text messages, making phone calls, people's screens lighting up. It's like I have no interest in going to a movie theater. None. Did, uh, did you have the pleasure of anybody sneezing on you? I mean, that, you know, or uh, coughing, You know, I wouldn't acting. be the least bit surprised because, you know, uh, up in Santa Barbara County, the weather was horribly cold uh, for, for the Christmas season. So a lot of people did have the sniffles. I, I'm sure that happened. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But people are just arrogant, and they're sitting there like they're in their living room. People taking their shoes off. I mean, I can't believe the behavior in movie theaters. It, it's yeah. outrageous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's outrageous. And, uh, you know, I, I agree with also the, the caller that just called about the Internet. Uh, I think he's right on the money with that. Um, I, uh, I, I needed an office chair the other day. Instead of going to Office Depot, I just got online. And boom. I had it. I had it. In three days, man, and I, I didn't have to go park in the parking lot and fight traffic, deal with the lines. Yeah, you know? movie theaters, relics. You're absolutely right. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's the Tom Likas, Likas show. show. Tom Likas. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. I had a chance to turn around and look at, um, well, let's start with a shopping mall. And in those abandoned stores that used to be Foot Lockers, Champ Sports, and Starbucks, I began to see a bigger picture. And the bigger picture was... That so many things that we thought were big businesses, so many things we took for granted as being big, big, bigger than big, suddenly are just gone. Gone. We've talked about newspapers and movie theaters. We've talked about uh, bookstores. We've talked about, I mean, there's just so many things. Some of the uh, some of those uh, little celebrity bimbos that everybody was paying all that attention to. Does anybody care anymore? Zach on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tommy, how's it going, man? It's going okay. You know what? I'm glad that I think uh, I think this is on the way out. Our reality show is about rich, spoiled bitches and their little dilemmas that no one cares about. <laughs> I agree oh. with that. I agree with that. Like they're, I mean, they're I know those shows. shows. Those shows had a run for a while, and they made money, and they were, had, had viewers. And I'm not going to say they weren't popular, but um, I do believe that they seem almost totally irrelevant when people are scratching to find jobs. Yeah. However, the good news is with the economic, the economy looking the way it is, there should be some good episodes of Cops coming up here pretty soon. <laughs> but uh, anyway, can you take me out, uh, Jesus style. Jesus Christ style. Here you go. Right now. The hammering and nailing is about to begin. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. How are you doing? Great. I wanted to call and comment on 
two things. On the music stores, because we grew up going every weekend, my dad would take me and my brother over to Tower Records or the warehouse, and you can't even find one where I live anymore. Well, I, I don't think there are any Tower Records anymore. I think the whole uh, company went out of business. Yeah, but, I mean, we have to drive even, like, 35 miles to even get to a record store. Well, because now what's happened is uh, stores like Best Buy have taken that over. Yeah. You can't find anything there. Uh, no, I, I understand that, but uh, that's the way it is. Uh, here in L.A., the one old line record store that exists, or the one that uh, most resembles a record store, is that Amoeba Music in Hollywood. Yeah, and it's such a pain to get out there sometimes. If it's traffic, and you know how it is living in L.A. I do know how it is living in L.A., but, uh, you know, most people now are buying records uh, by by downloading songs. Yeah. Or they're buying uh, CDs on the Internet. But they're certainly not going down on a Saturday to the record store and putting a pair of headphones on. No, definitely not. Did you ever go to a Virgin Mega store when there was such a thing? Um, I didn't really ever go to Virgin Mega, uh, Mega store, but I did used to go to a Blockbuster Music, and I remember they used to have headphones where you can just bring a CD up and they would just let you listen to the CD before you bought it. Yes. But now uh, those days are over. Yeah. I, I mean, you can say, you, by the way, you, if you have the music service Rhapsody online, you can sample music on there. Amazon.com lets you sample music. Yeah. You know, why, why do you need to drive down to the record store? Yeah, definitely. And now, also, I'm sure your dad even, grew up at the record store and so for him it was important, but... Uh, is it really important for you? Yeah, it's just, you know, I, I feel like a lot of kids are getting, you know, losing out on that. You know, it's, like, it's a good time having to spend with your dad and, you know, learning about old music and stuff from when they were young. Well, and then, you need to learn to sit in front of the computer and do that. Yeah. You know, if, your dad, if, your da if, you, if your dad would get Rhapsody, as an example, mm -hmm. and there are other music services like Rhapsody, it just, just happened to be the one I subscribe to. Um, you can, he can play you every song he ever knew when he was a kid. Yeah, definitely. They're all on there. I think you kind of just missed that social environment, though, of a record store. Well, we've had a lot of things like that go by the boards. I mean, bookstores, record stores. I mean, even the drive through window at uh, your average fast food place. You don't go in and sit down at, a, at the counter and order a hamburger anymore. Who does that? Yeah. Even yeah, Blockbuster yeah. Video, I mean, even the video store looks like a ghost town because everybody's on Netflix. Well, yeah. I mean, I've been to Blockbuster, and yeah, you can shoot a cannon through there uh, most yeah. times, except maybe Friday and Saturday night, it's, it's dead as a doornail. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you very much for taking my call, Tom. It was a pleasure getting through. Can thank you. I appreciate the call. By the way, Blockbuster Video, remember when everyone said Blockbuster Video was going to be the end of the world? Oh, my God. All the mom and pop stores are going away, and and now Blockbuster looks like it's a trouble. I don't know if it is or it isn't. It looks like it's a trouble because when I go in there, nobody there. And yes, I use Netflix and pay per view and on demand services. The, the idea of driving down to Blockbuster seems quaint. I remember on Saturday night, my girlfriend and I used to drive down to the Blockbuster. And we'd pick up some butterfingers while we were there. Oh, yeah. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking about those relics of the recent good times, which ended within the past year. Rich on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Father. How are you? Great. What what happened to the broke man's Bentley, the 300C? <laughs> I saw everybody refinancing their houses, taking one of those suckers out, and putting the Bentley grill in the front, and thinking it were bad. <laughs> You're right about that. Anyway, can you take me out Kobe style? Of course I can, Rich. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's our telephone number. This is Matthew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, uh, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing okay, Matthew. Good. Hey, I gotta let you know, man. Um, by where I live, they've already started laying people off from Costco. I mentioned this during the Christmas season. How I'd gone to Costco 
on a Saturday and it wasn't crowded during Christmas season. Now, it's one thing when they tell you that Tiffany's is not drawing a big crowd anymore. But when Costco isn't crowded and they're still giving away the free chimichangas, yeah. they, they still got those uh, uh, <laughs> the taquitos. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the little no. pigs in a blanket. The, uh, the Progresso soup and a little thimble. And uh, I, during Christmas season, I, I, I'm a regular Costco shopper and a worshiper of Costco, and I was blown away how few people were there. Yeah, um, yeah. I was told that uh, anybody that has been working there for a year is going to be laid off this month. And um, and then the because uh, there, there's two Costcos by where I live, and they're like a ten mile radius of each other, and I think that's r r ridiculous. So wow. and the. Uh, how lucky can you get two Costco's within 30 miles of each other? That's great. You know, there's one I'm wondering about. Of course, I've told you about the ones that I'm definite about in my own mind, the ones that I think have gone over the cliff. But what about Pinkberry and all those imitations of Pinkberry that are out there? Are people still spending all that money for, for our frozen yogurt? Are they still falling for that scam? Are there still lines out the street? You know, there was a little strip mall on Melrose Avenue, and it appeared to me, based on what I heard, uh, there was a Quiznos that had been in there, did moderate business, and then they put a Pinkberry in there, and the Pinkberry customers took up all the parking spaces, so that if you wanted to pull into Quiznos, there was no place to park, and Quiznos went out of business. So Pinkberry's sitting there by itself at this little strip mall. But I'm wondering, are people still uh, are people still going in there and spending that kind of money for yogurt? I'm curious. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. We're talking about those remnants of the recent past, back when things were good. Dave, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, you know, what I miss, Tom, is uh, the arcade. Arcades? You mean yeah. like, yeah, I video growing arcades. up, you could go to the skating rink, you'd get pizza and play all the arcades all you wanted. Yeah, that's certainly true. And that, yeah, it's true you don't see many of those anymore, primarily because they've been put out of business by the Wii and Xbox and PlayStation. They, they've been put out of business. Yeah, I know. I can't believe it because they used to be like the popular spot for kids after school and such. Yeah. I mean, where do you buy your crystal meth if you're not going down to the video arcade? <laughs> Seriously, who's going to get you a 40? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe for a buck you can get it. It's probably a website where you can order <laughs> <laughs> but remember, kids, drink responsibly. Hey, you can order a, a weed online nowadays, so... Is that... I had no idea. Yeah, you can order seeds and germinate them. I had... Really? That would be wrong. Don't be doing that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're talking about the stores, the products, the trends, the people who were the hottest, hottest, hottest thing going. And now suddenly, now the economy is in the crapper. They've all gone away. Come on, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah, from Hollywood, the Tom Likas show, now heard six days a week. Our Saturday numbers, they came in today, they're going through the friggin' roof. The Tom Likas show, Saturdays from 2 until 6 p.m., Monday through Friday from 3 until 8 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk and blowmeuptom.com. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. We're talking about remnants of the recent good financial times that now look like dinosaurs, like relics. Mark on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing today? Doing okay. You know, I'm sitting here in traffic, and, I, and I'm laughing because I, I got a Toyota 4Runner behind me. I know you brought up the SUV thing, but I just love the fact that all these folks, you know, living short-term, taking out these leases on these Humvees to keep up with their neighbors and stuff. I mean, I wonder how these five-year leases are looking now because... <laughs> I don't know how people can. I know you're, you're probably a reasonable guy. I mean, I drive a pickup truck and I make a pretty decent living, but I don't understand how these people can afford these cars or did afford those cars, and now uh, I guess it's coming home to roost. Well, they did it by using their houses as an ATM or a piggy bank, and uh, now uh, the piper has to be paid, and all these people are screwed. And I kind of, I take a little bit of, you know, I smile a little bit here because I, you know, being conservative helps every once in a while, you know. 
That's exactly right. Uh, but it's what I've been preaching on this show for a very long time. You know, I, I, you know, they keep over the Joneses. I don't know how the Joneses think about it when they see the for sale sign in front of their houses and uh, the cars are being thrown away. I get a big laugh out of it, I want to tell you. Yeah, I do, too. Thanks for taking my call, Tom. Thank you, Mark. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Okay, let's talk about one of the biggest busts of 2008. I think all the signings of the 2000 Clippers. Well, were the, were the Clippers ever the next big thing? I mean, were they ever a big fad, a big trend? Well, they never were. But besides, uh, besides when they made the playoffs, when the Lakers didn't miss, when the Lakers missed the playoffs, that you know, they they had they had a lot of big signings this year, and and they don't Look, have that much support. Let's just tell I'm, let's just tell the truth. Clipper fans are the people who carjack Laker fans. <laughs> no, I'm the truth has to be told. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'm not. I'm a Laker fan, but I, 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 I think that um, Clipper fans deserve more than that. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, no, they don't. They're getting exactly what they deserve. <laughs> Clipper fans are getting exactly what they deserve. Bad signings, bad drafts, or. No, no, no. The, the owner doesn't care about winning. You hear what I'm saying? My opinion is that Donald T. Sterling, the owner, doesn't care about winning. That's it. Anybody who spends that kind of money to go to a Clipper game is a fool. Yeah, and, uh, and by the way, yeah, they, they, these are definitely, if they're not carjacking Laker fans, at the very least, these are the people who can't afford Laker tickets or have no connections to get Laker tickets. <laughs> No. Uh, you know who the Clipper fans are. Come on. And they always have some excuse for rooting for the Clippers instead of the Lakers, you know. Oh, you know what? The Lakers fans are a bunch of phonies. Yeah, you know, come on. And these people would give their left nut to go to a, a, a Laker game if only they could afford a ticket. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is almost 300 and up. That's what I love about it. There you go. I'm going to say a Laker fan. So, all right, Tom, can you take me out with a... Um, Take me out, Kobe style? Yes, Jason, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 I always wonder, you know, when the Clippers play in the afternoon and the Lakers play at night, I always wonder if the Clipper fans, like, wait around on, like, Figueroa Street somewhere for the Lakers fans to show up. Now, come on, you've thought this, too. Let's tell the truth. <laughs> You're walking around, you know, 12th Street or 8th Street downtown. You walk around the corner with your Laker gear on, and suddenly, some <laughs> suddenly somebody with a Baron Davis jersey is there to meet you. Come on. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Yeah, Billy Crystal too. All of them. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. <laughs> Let's say hello here to Blair on the Tom Likas show. Tom, first time, long time. Yes, Blair. I have such fond memories of going to the drive-in theaters in my PJs, throwing the sleeping bag on top of the station wagon. Where are you calling from? The nineteen sixties. I'm 45 years old, but in there the hasn't been a drive-in in L.A. in 20 years. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, before I, I've been married 10 years. About the time uh, the Clippers moved here. <laughs> <laughs> I used to date my, my wife. Uh, we used to go to the drive-in. I'd bring a six-pack of beer. Uh, wonderful times. And I really do miss them. Now they're housing developments. Yeah, so this is not a recent trend. Yeah, we were talking about stuff that was popular a year ago. Maybe you I'm didn't sorry. hear the topic. Yeah. Now, now, well, maybe you thought this was 1970, but it's but it's not. This is uh, oh, okay. 2009. Can you still take me out with the bong rip, no cough, and uh, Snoop Dogg? I have a feeling it won't be your first today, sir. No cough. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jay on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tommy, how are you? I'm doing okay, Jay. What's going on today? Uh, not much. 
I got to tell you, Tom, I think it's very clear, uh, and if it was popular last year, that's questionable, but nobody's paying for Scientology anymore, that's for sure. Really? Oh, yeah, that's the pay-to-play religion. Nobody has enough money to pay for that scam anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they had the worst year last year with those anonymous protesters taking them down. I saw them every day out on Hollywood Boulevard just raising hell, so I don't think anybody's joining that cult. Well, you say that, but they've been doing really, really well for a very long time. I heard opposite, Tom. I heard they're losing members by, like, the thousands. Yeah, but who, how would you know that? Only they know how many members they have. Yeah, but they're a bunch of liars, Tom. You know that. You can't trust what they're saying. Well, that's your opinion, and just be sure to leave your last name so the legal department of the Church of Scientology <laughs> exactly. can contact you and sue you for that. Hey, they can find me out there this week, and we're going to have a huge protest against them. So there we go. That's your agenda right there. Okay. One eight hundred five eight hundred tough. Someone's gonna call up. Yeah, abortion. That trend. Yeah, remember when abortion was the in thing? One eight hundred five. By the way, I think abortion is shooting right through the roof. Bad economic times. Trust me when I tell you. One uh, eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Raul on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Raul. Hey Tom. First time, long time. How you doing? Doing great. Awesome, I know you are. Hey, I just wanted to let you know, uh, I work over here in Costa Mesa, and one of the big things that uh, they're doing out here, or they were doing before the trend, was uh, they threw these uh, great big old condominium skyride buildings. And uh, the mortgages were insane with uh, all the fees that they were throwing out there, and people were signing up for them when the times were good. They started building them. Yeah, you know, and, there, uh, there's, uh, there's big one at Hollywood and Vine, and there's other ones and uh, around town. There's a lot of those. You're absolutely right. Um, I was in Hollywood the other day, and I saw condos, uh, one million and up. It said the sign was on the building, one million and up. Who's buying those? These were flop houses. These were old music publishing offices, and now they're million dollar condos. You have got to be kidding! It's the Tom Likas Show.